Whatever you do, please do not miss the rapture, follow Jesus. Welcome to our in-depth exploration of one of the most intriguing and often debated topics in Christian eschatology, the rapture. This concept, rooted in biblical prophecy, has fascinated believers and theologians alike for centuries. In this video, we will delve into the scriptural foundations of the rapture, examining key passages from the Bible, particularly the book of Revelation, to understand what this event entails, its significance, and the various interpretations that have emerged over time. What is the rapture? The rapture refers to the belief that at a certain point in history, believers in Christ will be taken up or raptured from the earth to meet the Lord in the air. This event is often seen as a precursor to the final tribulation period and the second coming of Christ. The term rapture itself comes from the Latin word rapturo, which means caught up or taken away, a translation from the Greek word harpazo used in the New Testament. Biblical basis for the rapture. The primary scriptural reference for the rapture is found in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, 17, where the Apostle Paul writes, For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet. Call of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. This passage vividly describes the moment when believers both those who have died and those still living, will be gathered to meet Christ. The Rapture and the Book of Revelation The Book of Revelation, written by the Apostle John, is a rich and complex text filled with symbolic and prophetic imagery. While it does not explicitly mention the word rapture, many theologians see references to this event throughout its chapters. The Church Age and Letters to the Churches, Revelation 2.3 the first few chapters of Revelation contain letters to the seven churches in Asia Minor. These letters address various issues within the churches and provide both commendations and warnings. Some scholars believe that these letters symbolically represent different periods in the history of the church, culminating in the end times. The throne in heaven, Revelation 4. Revelation 4 describes a vision of heaven where John sees a throne with someone sitting on it. Surrounding the throne are 24 elders and four living creatures all worshipping God. This chapter sets the stage for the subsequent visions and judgments. Some interpret the presence of the elders as representing the raptured church. Now in heaven with God, the seals, trumpets and bowls, Revelation 6.16. Much of Revelation is devoted to the series of judgments that will befall the earth during the tribulation period. The seven seals, seven trumpets and seven bowls. These judgments describe a time of great suffering and upheaval, which many believe will occur after the rapture of the church. Key passages include the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Revelation 618. These riders represent conquest, war, famine and death. The seven trumpets, Revelation 8 and 9, 11, 15, 19. These trumpets herald various plagues and disasters, culminating in the establishment of God's kingdom. The seven bowls, Revelation 16. These bowls represent the final devastating judgments on the earth. Interpretations of the rapture. There are several different interpretations of the rapture within Christian eschatology, primarily differing on the timing of the event in relation to the tribulation period. Pre-tribulation rapture. This view holds that the rapture will occur before the tribulation period begins. Believers will be taken up to heaven, spared from the coming wrath and suffering. This interpretation is supported by passages such as Revelation 3.10, where Jesus promises to keep the faithful from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world. Mid-Tribulation Rapture Proponents of this view believe that the rapture will occur halfway through the tribulation period after the first three and a half years of relatively lesser tribulation and before the final more intense period of suffering. This is based on the belief that the church will be present for some of the tribulation but will be raptured before the worst of. God's judgments are unleashed. Post-Tribulation Rapture this perspective asserts that the rapture will happen at the end of the tribulation period. Believers will go through the entire period of suffering and will be raptured to meet Christ as he returns to establish his kingdom on earth. Advocates of this view often cite Matthew 24, 29, 31, where Jesus describes his return. 
immediately after the tribulation of those days. Symbolism and imagery in Revelation. The Book of Revelation is renowned for its vivid and sometimes perplexing imagery. Understanding the symbolism is key to interpreting its messages about the rapture and end times. The Woman and the Dragon, Revelation 12. This chapter describes a woman clothed with the sun, standing on the moon and wearing a crown of 12 stars. She gives birth to a male child who is destined to rule all nations. A dragon, identified as Satan, attempts to devour the child but is thwarted. Many interpret the woman as representing Israel or the church, and the child as Christ. The dragon's actions symbolize the ongoing spiritual battle and the ultimate victory of God. The Beast and the False Prophet, Revelation 13. Revelation 13 introduces two beasts, one rising from the sea and the other from the earth. These beasts represent the Antichrist and the False Prophet, who will deceive the world and persecute believers during the tribulation. The mark of the beast, a sign of allegiance to these figures, is another critical element in the end times narrative. The New Heaven and New Earth, Revelation 21-22. The final chapters of Revelation describe the creation of a new heaven and a new earth where God will dwell with his people. This vision of ultimate restoration and eternal peace provides hope and assurance to believers, reinforcing the promise of the rapture and the eventual triumph of good over evil. The role of the rapture in Christian hope for many Christians, the rapture is a source of hope and comfort, a promise that they will be spared from the worst of the tribulation and will be united with Christ. It emphasizes the imminent return of Jesus and encourages believers to live in a state of readiness and faithfulness. Living in expectation, the New Testament frequently exhorts believers to live in anticipation of Christ's return. Passages such as Matthew 24, 42, 44 and 1 Thessalonians 5, 2, 6 encourage vigilance and preparedness, underscoring the sudden and unexpected nature of the rapture, comfort in suffering. The promise of the rapture also provides solace in times of trial and suffering. Knowing that they will ultimately be with the Lord can help believers endure present difficulties with patience and hope. As expressed in passages like Romans 8, 18, 25, Conclusion. The rapture is a profound and deeply significant concept within Christian eschatology, rooted in the promises of Scripture and the prophetic visions of Revelation. Whether viewed as an event that will occur before, during or after the tribulation, it remains a central element of Christian hope, reminding believers of the imminent return of Christ and the ultimate fulfillment of God's redemptive plan. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the biblical foundations of the rapture. We hope this exploration has deepened your understanding and enriched your faith. Please like, share and subscribe for more in-depth biblical studies and insights. Until next time, may you live in the hope and anticipation of Christ's glorious return.